Welcome back to the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot, Part 4. Today's topic, validation. So when the UI makes a post or a put request, we want to validate the object coming in because we don't want to save crap data. For example, the name should be required, the price should not be negative, or the description should be greater than 20 characters. There are many ways to validate objects. One is custom validation, which is basically a bunch of if statements. You can use the spring starter validation, which uses annotations, for example, not null on your entity class. You can use SQL validation, where you have SQL table constraints. And you can have UI validation. UI validation is not acceptable by itself. The backend must be self-protecting. You can't rely on an external source to send you good data. So we're going to start with custom validation, which is a bunch of if statements, and they're going to live in the service class. The product will get sent in the request, and then we're going to check each property that we care about. Eventually, we will add some abstractions so that it can be used on the put and post request. We're going to create a product not valid exception class, then handle when the exception is thrown in our global exception handler class, and then we'll send back our custom error response we covered in the last video, so not Spring Boot's default response. Start by creating a new Java class in our exceptions folder called product not valid exception. It will extend the runtime exception, annotate it with at response status, and pass in the HTTP status of bad request. Create a constructor and pass in a string message. Call super and pass in the message. Then go to the global exception handler class and create a new method. Public error response handle product not valid exception, and we pass in a product not valid exception. Then we're going to return a new error response, and we pass in the exception dot get message. Annotate it with at exception handler and tell it to handle the product not valid exception dot class, and then annotate it with at response body and at response status with HTTP status of bad request. Okay, we're now ready to write our validation logic. Go over to the service class for the create product service. And we want to validate it before we save it to the repository. So if string utils dot is empty and we pass in product dot get name, we'll throw a new product not valid exception with a message of name is required. We'll do the same thing for the next field. If get description length is less than 20, we'll throw a new product not valid exception, but this time pass in a different message. And lastly, if product.getPrice is null or the price is less than zero, we'll throw a new product not valid exception and pass in price cannot be negative. Okay, it should be working now. Boot up your project and make your way over to Postman. When I pass in an empty string for the name, I get back a message, name is required. If I pass in null, I get the same thing. And if I don't include it at all, I get the same error message. Adding it back in. If I submit a description that's too short, I get description must be at least 20 characters. And then if I put in a negative price, I can see that price cannot be negative is also sent back. So this is the basic idea of custom validation, a bunch of if statements. But now let's make it a little more sophisticated by adding in some abstraction. If I highlight this, I can right click, refactor, and then click extract method. I can name the method validate product. And now all of this logic is encapsulated into one method where it's clear of what I'm trying to do. In the previous video, I also created an enum that holds all of my error messages. So I'll go ahead and add my new error messages now. And then reference them here. This is not required, but something that I like to do. This does have one disadvantage though, because we will need to call this method in the put call. So let's create a new folder. I'm going to call it validators. And in the folder, create a new class, product validator. Give it a private constructor. 
and then it will have one method, public static void execute. Copy your logic and paste it over here. Now we can call product validator dot execute, pass in the product, and we can now call this in both the put and post calls. Another option for validation is to use the spring starter validation. We need to add a Maven dependency, but then we add annotations in our entity class. We'll first see how Spring handles it if we don't catch the exception, but then we'll use the product not valid exception class that we just created and then handle it using our global exception handler class. And just FYI, we will be catching the constraint violation exception, not the binding result if you're familiar with that. First, paste your dependency into your pom.xml file and then do a Maven refresh. There is a link in the description for you to get the latest Spring Boot starter validation. Go back to your service classes and for now, comment out product validator.execute. Now, make your way over to your entity class. And starting with the name field, we're going to annotate it with at not null. And then we're going to pass in a message, name is required. For the description field, we'll use the at size annotation with a min of 20 and a message of description must be 20 characters long. And then for the price, we'll use the at positive or zero annotation with a message of price must not be negative. Boot up your project and make your way over to Postman. Let's do the same thing as before, and for name, we'll say null. This time when we click send, it uses Java Spring Boot's default error handling because we didn't explicitly catch this exception. But if you look closely, it says validation failed for classes product, and then you can see our messages. So we want to have our own custom error message like we did before. So go over to the global exception handler class and create a new method. Public error response, handle product not valid constraints. We need to pass in a constraint violation exception. And then return a new error response with exception dot get constraint violations dot iterator dot next dot get message. Essentially, this just returns the first error, not all of them. So at my work personally, we do it like this. We only send back the first error it faults on. You could of course structure this in a way to send back all of the errors, but this is good enough for our use case. Annotate it with at exception handler with constraint violation exception dot class. Annotate it with at response body and at response status with an HTTP status of bad request. If you make your way back over to Postman and ping it again, you'll get the first error message that it finds, and in this case, its description must be 20 characters long. Here's a couple of notes. There are dozens of ways to validate objects. We covered custom validation, which is just a bunch of if statements, and we also covered constraint violation exception, but there are more. You could use the binding results in the at valid annotation. Spring also allows you to make your own annotations and there's even a Spring Validator interface. So this is the no bullshit guide to Java Spring Boot, so I don't think there's any sense in covering all of these different ways to validate, but if you run into a different one, you can just use ChatGPT or the Spring documentation to figure it out. The important thing to know is that your backend should be self-contained, meaning any data that passes through it should be validated before you save it to the database. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.